Stratigraphy is a branch of geology which deals with the sequential arrangement of layered rocks according to their time of formation on the earth's surface. The term stratigraphy is derived from the Latin word stratum and Greek word graphia and lit this literally means writing about strata. Any stratigraphic studies include three different stages. The first one is the stratigraphic classification. The second one is the stratigraphic correlation and the last one is stratigraphic interpretation. Stratigraphic classification helps in grouping the sedimentary and volcanic rocks into rock formation on the basis of lithology and fossils. The stratigraphic correlation aims at matching or equating the rock formation of distant areas deposited on the same stages of the earth evolutionary history. And third one, stratigraphic interpretation. The stratigraphy aims at the interpretation of the stratigraphy records in terms of paleogeography, paleoenvironment, paleoecology, that or the climatic conditions that are present at the time of the rock units were deposited or formed. Before going into the guiding principles of stratigraphy, let's take a look at on the geologic time scale. The total succession of strata from the oldest to the most recent is termed as standard geological column. The geological time scale is composed of named time units and of course they are not stratigraphic units. The, it's the geologic time units is defined at the time span during which a particular sequence of strata of the geologic column that was laid out. For example, take the case of the Silurian time. The Silurian period is defined as the time span during which the corresponding part of the geologic column that is the Silurian system was laid down. The geological time scale is divided into a number of grand divisions of unequal duration in a hierarchical sense. The largest unit is the eon. Eons are subdivided into eras which again is subdivided into periods and which are subdivided into epochs and ages. Actually, there are two uh, eons. The first eon ranges from 4,600 million years to 541 million years of age, which is known as the Cryptozoic Eon. It is the eon which is having no life forms or there is no evident life in this eon. And it also contains Hadean, Archean and Protozoic, which collectively is known as Pre-Cambrian Eon. The Eon which is from 541 million years to present is known as Pantrozoic Eon or the Eon of Evident Life. It is again subdivided into three eras, a Older Paleozoic Era, a Middle Mesozoic Era and a Younger Cenozoic Era. And the, these three eras are again subdivided into period based on fossils and other uh, criteria. The Paleozoic Era consists of an Older Cambrian a Ordovician period, a Silurian period, a Devonian period, Carboniferous period and a Permian period. The Paleozoic era ranges from 541 million years to 252 million years. And after 252 million years, 266 million years is the uh, Mesozoic era. And Mesozoic era consists of three periods, the Triassic, the Jurassic and the Cretaceous. And Mesozoic comes to an end around 66 million years. The era which is ranging from 66 million years to today, that is the reason is known as the Cenozoic era. It consists of three periods, the Paleogene, the Neogene and the Quaternary. Uh, earlier, the Paleogene and Neogene are collectively termed as the tertiaries. And again, the Paleogene is again divided into epochs, the Paleocene, Eocene and Oligocene. Neogene is again subdivided into the Miocene epoch and Pliocene epoch. And quaternary, that is the present time is uh, present time is divided into a Pleistocene epoch and a Holocene epoch. So let us take a look on the guiding principles of stratigraphy. The most important or the first law in stratigraphy is the principle of uniformity or the uniformitarianism. It was initially stated by James Hutton and later popularized in the 19th century by Charles Lyell. The uniformitarianism suggests that the Earth's geologic processes acted in the same manner 
and essentially with the same intensity in the past as they do in the present. Or in simple word, understanding the present is the key to understand the past. On the other hand, we can summarize it as present is the key to the past. For a better understanding, the stratigraphic scientists interpret the ancient rock stratigraphy with the products of the present day processes. It's actually the fundamental concept of the subject geology. The next principle is the principle of superposition. It was actually stated by Nicholas Steno in 1669. It states that in a given succession, that is an undisturbed succession, the bed decreases in age from bottom to top. Take the case of the figure given here and consider it as an undisturbed succession so that it doesn't have encountered any structural uh, disturbances. So that the first one to be laid down will be the uh, oldest one or the bottom one will be the oldest one. As we move from bottom to top, the age of the bed decreases. The next principle is the principle of original horizontality. It says that the upper surface of the sedimentary layer initially come to rest essentially parallel to the surface of deposition except in rare cases where it may have an inclination of around 30 up to 35 degree. So if safely it can be assumed that the layers are horizontal at the time of deposition. This law or principle is also stated by Nicholas Steno in 1669. In areas that are affected by orogenic movements or say the mountain building movements, the normal succession may be inverted or it may be overturned. In such cases, we need some physical and stratigraphical criteria such as ripple mark, greater bedding, such as in order to find the top and bottom of the bed. So we can take a look on the criteria that are used for finding the top and bottom of the beds. The first one is the, the normal grading or a graded bedding. As you can see, they, these are sedimentary deposition which may be due to alluvial or wind deposition. In this particular case or the in case of normal bedding, the sediment decreases in size from bottom to top. The bottom sediments will be having the higher sedimentary size or the grain size. As we move to the top, the sediment size will gradually thins out or the gradually it will decreases in size. So if we get a bed which is having this type of normal grading, you can definitely say that which part is on top, which part is on the bottom. The next criteria will be a cross bedding. A typical cross bedding consists of three parts, a top set, a bottom set which are parallel and there is a four set which is like slanting in between them. When you closely take, when you look closely into the a typical cross bedding structure, the four set will be joining tangentially or nearly parallelly to the bottom set. While these four sets are piercing into the top set. So you can clearly see the which one is the bottom area, which one is the top side. The next criteria will be a ripple mass. These are formed due to either wind or waves. And as you can see in the figure, they are something like wave which has got a crust as well as a trough. And the crust will be something smooth and uh, something round while the trough of the ripple marks will be some sharp uh, something like sharp or a wedge like feature so you can definitely say that which side is top and which side is bottom the next one is a mud crack these are you very usually seen after rainy days so when such cracks occur the middle part will be a depression and the part along the cracks will be something elevated when compared to the other parts. So if we get a mud crack in any one of the strata, we can definitely say that which direction the younger beds will be. The next one are soil marks. These are caused due to the scoring action of seawater on beaches. And 
once the scoring action creates some grooves the these grooves were later deposited by secondary uh, deposit and it will be preserved as cast the next criteria for identifying the top and bottom of beds are the load cast these are structures which are very characteristically formed when a competent bed say a, a, a sandstone when they are deposited over an incompetent mud or clay so that the load or the pressure from the overburden or pressure from the sandstone will cause the flame like structure or cast in the underlying clay which help us to find the top and bottom of the given beds the last one being the rain prints these are nothing but the impressions of rain uh, droplets when they are bombarded with the surfaces as you can see there the, there will be centered depression uh, which is comprised of an peripheral elevated area so when you got a rain print in any on, any one of the uh, beds in your strata you can definitely say that which side will be which side will be uh, pointing towards the younger side which side will be the older one the next principle is the principle of original lateral extension or the principle of continuity it states that the sediment deposited in a basin form a continuous layer until they reach the edge of the basin or gradually thins out in all direction because of the lack of sedimentary material it is also proposed by steno in 1669 as you can see in the figure that there there is a uh, depositionary basin where the deposition of sediments is taking place so you can see that definitely the edge of deposition will be the edge of basin if the basin is uh, evenly or un, uh, is extensive say a ocean basin or a sea sea then the depositionary basin will not have any edges so that the deposition takes place until the sedimentary rate of sedimentation is less so that the edges will be preserved as air it gradually pinches out due to the less sedimentation towards the periphery the next principle is the principle of truncation by erosion or structural complexities as we know from our last principle that is the principle of original lateral extension that no beds will stop abruptly either it will pinches out or it will stops against a basin outlay so that this the principle of truncation by erosion or structural complexity states that if a bed stops abruptly at a canyon wall or cuts abruptly against another strata we infer that an erosion or some structural events like faulting have removed the bed from its original position the next principle is the principle of cross cutting relationship any relationship that indicates which one of the two events occurred first is very useful and significant in the field stratigraphy thus cross cutting relationship have a chronologic importance and the cross cutting relationship is exhibited by either a erosional contacts like unconformity a structural contact such as fault or a intrusive contact such as dikes based on the cross cutting relationship there are three principles the first one is any intrusive body is younger than all the the beds that it has intruded the second one is the faults are younger than all the rocks that they have displaced the third one is unconformable contact truncates the upper surface or the terminal edges of rocks below and these separates the overlying younger sequence from an underlying older sequence along a simple or a highly irregular surface for example take a look at this figure it's a figure of a faulting cutting across all the beds as from the principle of cross cut relationship you know that the fault will be younger than or the fault has occurred after the beds has been deposited so that the fault is younger than the bed that they have cut it there is another example in here the bed which is termed as oldest has been deposited first then the sandstone bed then the bed containing the fossils has been deposited 
and the youngest bed is the named as older bed. After the bed has been deposited, the there occur an intrusion, and so that it is the youngest of the sequence. There is one more example here, as you can see. I will uh, just explain the event or the sequence of event. First, the bed C has been deposited. Then it has the B has been deposited. And last, the bed A has been deposited. Then these three beds were intruded by the bed D. And the entire sequence have been offset by the fault E. So, in this present figure, the sequence of event will be the deposition of C, B and A. Then it has been intruded by D so that D became younger than A, B and C. Then the entire area was offset by the fault E. So the fault E is the youngest uh, geological feature that is present in this figure. The next rule is the rule of inclusions. It is a simple rule which states that if a rock pieces has been included in another bed, the present rock pieces are formed well before the bed that have included them. For example, here take the case of A and B and uh, consider that some parts of or some rock fragments of A has been included in B. So according to this rule, it states that the rock fragments A that has been included in the bed B is formed before the rock B. And the last one is the law of faunal succession and the law of faunal assemblages. The assemblage of animal species leaving together in a given time and place constitute a fauna and the corresponding assemblages of plants is termed as flora. Thus, the animals and plants now inhibit a region constitutes a modern flora and fauna. Likewise, those that have lived in some parts of the earth history form fossil fauna and flora of that period. The principle of faunal succession states that the fossil fauna and flora succeeds one another in a definite and a recognizable or determinable order and that each geology formation in a succession is characterized by an assemblage of fossils unique to it and different from those formations above and below it and they form age or period of any formation can be recognized by noting its fossil content. The last principle is the principle of fossil assemblages. It states that the similar assemblage of fossil organism indicate similar geologic age for the strata that contain them. With this we are concluding the session on the stratigraphy. If you are having any doubt or query, please free to contact me.